Welcome to Evening Prayer and our series where we are praying the Psalms together through Lent, using it as an opportunity to reflect, rest in God and pray for ourselves and others. The Psalms are ancient poems and song lyrics that express a wide variety of thoughts and feelings to God, giving us permission to do the same. If you haven't done so already, you can go and get your Bible now or open the link attached to this video to read and explore Psalm 58 with us tonight. First of all, let's still our hearts and minds as we prepare to talk to and hear from God. And if you work Monday to Friday, well done, you've made it to the weekend. If your week's work isn't done yet, may God grant you the strength to keep going and take this moment to breathe and enjoy God's presence. I'm going to light a candle together as we have been doing throughout this series. We light this candle to remind us that Jesus is light of the world, that no matter how dark things can seem around us, he is our hope, our strength and our joy. Let's take a minute to breathe in hope and to breathe out despair. To breathe in God's strength and to breathe out the times that we've failed on our own. To breathe in the joy that God gives us and to breathe out our heaviness and fears that we've gathered throughout the day. May God accept these unspoken prayers and the sighs of our heart. Amen. So let's read Psalm 58 together. I'm reading from the NIV version tonight. Do you rulers speak unjustly? Do you judge people with equity? No, in your heart you devise injustice and your hands meet out violence on the earth. Even from birth the wicked go astray. From the womb they are wayward, spreading lies. Their venom is like the venom of a snake like that of a cobra that has stopped its ears, that will not heed the tune of the charmer, however skillful an enchanter may be. Break the teeth in their mouths, O God. Lord, tear out the fangs of those lions. Let them vanish like water that flows away. When they draw the bow, let their arrows fall short. May they be like a slug that melts away as it moves along, like a stillborn child that never sees the sun. Before your pots can feel the heat of the thorns, whether they be green or dry, the wicked will be swept away. The righteous will be glad when they are avenged, when they dip their feet in the blood of the wicked. Then people will say, surely the righteous still are rewarded. Surely there is a God who judges the earth. I have to admit, this psalm made me mad. I found it really hard to understand not the words themselves, uh, but some of the sentiments behind it. So this is one of several Psalms that David uses to express his desire to curse his enemies. And personally, I don't want to paddle in the blood of my enemies. Um, I don't want to worship a God who thinks that that is what justice looks like. And having experienced it myself, I especially don't want to wish miscarriage or stillbirth on anyone. But as Rosie reminded us a few nights ago, this was written in a culture that is hard for us to understand, nearly 3,000 years ago. Remembering too that it is poetry that uses imagery, metaphor and exaggerated language. So even though this psalm made me mad, I continued to wrestle with it. And when the Bible is hard to understand, keep going, keep praying, keep looking for wisdom in it, you might still be mad at it, but God can reveal all sorts of things through your emotional response to a passage. And if the Psalms show us anything, it's that it's okay to bring our whole emotional selves to God. God completely understands our emotional lives. God created our emotions and as Jesus experienced all realms of human responses. When we're having trouble with a passage like this, 
the best thing we can do as Christians is to look at it from the perspective of Jesus' teachings. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says, You have heard it that it was said, Love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. In this section from the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus tells us to love and pray for those who persecute us. And this shapes our prayers in a completely different direction than how David has prayed. Jesus affirms that the unrighteous or the wicked um, as being much of God's creation as the righteous and instead of using the dehumanizing language that David uses when he refers to them as snakes and slugs and claiming they were wicked from the moment they could speak, Jesus opens our eyes to God's desire to redeem and make whole all of God's creation. C.S. Lewis once met a priest who had been in a room with Hitler. He had asked the priest, well, what did he look like? And the priest answered, like Christ, of course. So no matter how unjust or evil someone is acting, through Christ's words, we understand that they are still made in the image of God and they have the capacity to do good and to be reconciled with God. So maybe we aren't in a place where we can pray for our enemies in love. Maybe we're still hurting because of how someone has treated us unfairly. And maybe like David, we feel that our leaders are corrupt and unjust. Go to God with your raw, honest feelings. This is a step towards working to healing for yourself and for your enemies. And you might be surprised how God responds. A long time ago, before I had my lovely family that I have now, I had experienced my fourth or fifth miscarriage. I got to the stage where I was really mad at God. I took that anger and poured it out in prayer. I told God I was mad at them, that it wasn't fair, and I cried my whole heart's pain out. God's response was to give me a picture of myself as a toddler having a tantrum and their loving arms around me until I stopped crying. It was such a healing experience for me to know that God understood what I needed emotionally. So although I was mad at some of David's images and desires in the psalm, I want to be like David in continuing to bring my whole emotional self to God. There's healing in it. And if we pray for our enemies the way Jesus taught us to, there is healing for our enemies and society too. So let's pray together. Creator God, we pray for our leaders that they may know what your justice looks like, that they will protect and serve the poor among us, that they will listen to those who speak out against injustice, and that they will put the needs of others before their own. We pray for our anger about injustice, that when we bring it to you, you will make it into something beautiful, that it will spur us to action, that, will we, that we will know healing of our own hearts and the healing of our society. We pray for those who have known pregnancy loss, stillbirth, or the loss of a child. We thank you that you walk through this pain with them. Help us to know how to help them and to support them. We thank you that although the arc of the moral universe is long, it bends towards justice that ultimately your kingdom will be fully realised and that you will make all things new and perfect. And we'll say these words together. You can access them on the text as attached to the video. O High King of Heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church and send your Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So may your day be blessed by moments of quietness, light in the darkness, 
strength in your weakness, grace in your meekness, joy in your gladness, and peace in your stillness. May your day be blessed.